Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and this is the moon. In today's video I wanted to explore yet another idea about where this beautiful object came from and talk about the origin of the moon. Welcome to What The Math. So you may already know that there are several versions or several speculations about where Moon actually came from, and most of them involve some sort of a large catastrophic disaster, normally a collision. Now one of the reasons people today, or I guess scientists today, think that Moon most likely was born through a collision is because, first of all, Moon is surprisingly large in comparison to Earth. If you ever compare other moons, uh, or I guess other satellites in our solar system, like for example, let's take a look at um, Jupiter, you will quickly realize that compared to other planets with moons, our own moon is tremendously large, at least in comparison to Earth. The only other object that has a very similar sort of ratio, or I guess unusual ratio of planet to moon size is is unfortunately no longer considered to be a planet. It's the dwarf planet Pluto, although some scientists refer to the system as a binary dwarf planetary system. Mostly because if you actually compare Pluto to its partner Charon, you'll realize that um, their size and mass is actually not far off from each other. So the actual ratio of Pluto to Charon is about 1 to 10. So basically, uh, Charon is about 10% the mass of Pluto. But then, if we go back to Earth and compare our own moon to Earth, we'll realize that the ratio here is about 1 to 90. So it, it is a little bit smaller, but still much larger than other planets with their own moons. So how could have such a large object been created? Well, the most prevalent theory today basically states that this was a collision, a collision with a Mars-like object that happened something like 4.5 billion years ago when Earth was still much less massive, a lot more hot, and basically in its infancy. So this is kind of what the origin of the moon is seen as today. But I've always had a problem with this theory, or I guess with this speculation, um, even though it does have a lot of support behind it, but it doesn't really explain one major thing. Now, let me explain to you why I have a problem with this particular idea. And to basically show you the problem, I'm going to go to the solar system simulation here, decelerate time a little bit, and zoom into Earth. So right now you'll see that uh, Earth has a relatively stable and relatively circular orbit around the sun with a very, very small eccentricity and very, very small inclination. So eccentricity here is something like 1.6% and inclination is 0.2%. Uh, so that's very, very low. Now, if I were to take a Mars sized object and then launch it at a planet Earth, let's say from this direction where it probably came from. So kind of from the back, but basically simulating where um, a relatively large planetary object may have come from, you'll realize that as soon as these two objects collide with each other, the orbit of our planet Earth will now have shifted quite dramatically, even though um, the actual object that collided with Earth was not very big. So if I zoom out now, and once again take a look at its orbit, you'll realize that eccentricity of Earth has now increased quite a lot. Now, this new eccentricity creates a lot of problems. For one, it now actually comes relatively close to Jupiter and also Saturn, which basically means that at some point Earth will either get kicked out of the solar system or will probably fall into the Sun because one of these planets will decrease its um, periapsis to cross with the Sun. The other problem here is that this eccentricity is not very easily uh, removed. In other words, it's very difficult for us to now reduce this eccentricity to uh, 1%, 1.6% that Earth currently has, no matter how hard we try. Even if I run this for billions of years, uh, it's more likely that Earth will actually get kicked out of the solar system than it's going to be getting something along the lines of its current eccentricity. In other words, what I've just created 
is what Earth would probably have after this collision. So even if I try this again and this time try to collide the object maybe from the other side here, it still probably is going to create uh, an orbit that's not going to be very easily changeable over time. So even with this collision, as you can even see, the orbit has actually changed again. And so our planet Earth this time is going to have yet again much higher eccentricity and possibly even inclination than it used to have before. So this to me is a huge problem because why is it that today Earth doesn't have such a large eccentricity and instead has one of the lowest eccentricities in our solar system? So the collision is kind of not probably the best explanation for the creation of the moon. However, then I started to play around with the Universe Sandbox and realized that there are other ways of creating um, a relatively similar Earth-Moon system without any collisions. And that involves a much larger and much more unusual uh, creation known as a binary planet. Basically, a binary planetary system. So here, let's say we place uh, two objects. One is going to be size of Venus and one is going to be size of Earth. And we have them orbit around one another you'll realize that within a few seconds, they'll actually start warming up, heating up, and basically uh, become kind of molten. At the same time, they are currently experiencing a lot and a lot of tidal effects that are affecting their orbits. As a matter of fact, because of these tidal effects, these uh, two objects will slowly start moving closer and closer together. Now, it's possible that initially our planet Earth was actually such a system. And it's quite possible that this is actually how the moon was created as well. Now, once again, this is a speculation simply based on simulations I ran, but watch what happens if I actually place Venus much closer to Earth than it was originally. So basically here we have um, a, lar a large Earth-like object and a slightly smaller object that is a little bit less dense and as soon as I place them relatively close to one another, the smaller, less dense object, due to the tidal effects, is actually going to start slowly falling apart. And it will start happening relatively slow at first, but as the um, larger, more dense planet basically affects it more and more, it will start falling apart more and more as well. And at some point, this Venus that used to be there is going to become smaller and smaller and smaller and the vast majority of its material is actually going to be deposited on the Earth here. Now, if I run this long enough, what I'll actually end up seeing or creating um, is going to be a system with a lot and a lot of particles flying around it and a relatively small moon-like object that's going to be called Venus. And there it is actually right there in the, in the background. At some point, this Venus is actually going to have a relatively stable circular orbit because some of these other fragments are going to influence its orbit. And right now I'm actually going to zoom into Venus just so we can actually see how it um, is influenced by other objects. So I'm going to run this for a few minutes just to show you how all of this evolves. But Every single time I run the simulation, it always kind of ends up creating a very similar either binary or multi-moon uh, system with basically Earth being the larger object, Venus being a much smaller object, about um, maybe one one hundredth of the mass. And usually I end up having a lot of other fragments as well that either collide with Venus or basically land back on Earth. Now, we're going to run this a few times, and I just wanted to show you what actually happens. And this didn't require any collision whatsoever, but it actually does create a moon-like object. And with enough gravitational interaction with other fragments, this Venus moon object will eventually assume an orbit farther away from Earth that's going to be a lot more circular than it is right now. So right now you see that there is actually several fragments orbiting around Earth and at some point they actually are going to all join together and create a large enough um, moon-like object. 
Now, just to kind of show you that this, this is what happens pretty much every single time, I'm gonna run this again, simply restart the simulation, and once again, place Venus right next to Earth, just to show you how um, this is actually a relatively accurate scenario that could explain the origin of the Moon. So basically, if originally there were actually these two planets instead of just one planet, um, one of these larger, more dense planets could have actually shredded apart its smaller partner and create the Moon from it. And this would explain pretty much everything we know about the Moon, including the fact that Earth and the Moon have relatively similar composition. They also have a relatively stable orbit with one another, but most importantly, Earth itself um, doesn't really have an eccentric orbit around the Sun. And uh, this right here would actually account for all of those observations. Now, whether this is actually any, uh, true or not, or whether this is how Moon was actually born, definitely requires a lot more investigation and a lot more studies, but um, it definitely also explains the origin of the Moon without an actual collision. So in other words, it's possible that a long time ago, Earth was a binary system, a binary planetary system, that basically destroyed the second object, shredded it apart due to the tidal effects, um, and that object ended up being the Moon. So this right here, basically the uh, origin of the Moon and represents what Moon may have been like a long time ago. So if I run this long enough, and if I try this several times, I will eventually end up with a scenario where both Earth and the Moon have pretty much the same composition as they do in real life and have uh, same orbital parameters as well. Right now, um, if you zoom into this Moon, its actual mass is a little bit more than the Moon and the mass of Earth is more as well, but that's because I actually started with the higher parameters as well. I basically took Earth and Venus instead of taking much smaller planets. Nevertheless, though, this is actually a pretty interesting explanation to the creation of the Moon scenario, and most importantly, it actually takes into account all of the things we know about both the Moon and Earth. Now, let me guys know what you think in the comments below. Do you think this is actually how the Moon was created, or do you have any other explanations for how this beautiful object came to be? Like I said, my problem with current explanations is that the collision theory doesn't explain why the orbit of Earth around the Sun is so circular and so stable. I think if there was a collision large enough to dislodge the Earth from its orbit, the eccentricity would have been much higher. This, however, the binary planetary system explains pretty much everything while at the same time explaining why Earth and the Moon have relatively similar composition and why Earth doesn't actually have this unusual orbit that they would have otherwise. Do you guys think it's possible? Let me know in the comments below. And most importantly, subscribe if you still haven't, share this video with someone who enjoys learning through video games, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. In some of the future videos, we're going to investigate other origins of the Moon theories, and we're going to talk about our planet in more detail as well. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.